Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, champion shooter George Digweed designs his first competition clay layout. Field tree pro staffer Simon Barr is out to shoot a wild boar under the moonlight in Croatia. The Novice Schools Challenge is just around the corner. We're finding out how easy it is for kids to go shooting. First, sporting shooter editor Dom Holtam is off to Denmark to try out new technology in rifles and rifle scopes. Now and again, companies choose to show the great and the good of the European shooting press what they're really proud of. In this case, we've been invited to Denmark to a very special range to shoot lots and lots of bullets. The event is hosted by Zeiss. The guys at the optics company want to prove that their new ballistic turret is child's play. And what better way than to invite some of the biggest children in the industry to have a go? Aha! Just on cue, there's sporting shooter editor Dom Holtam and shooting sports editor Pete Moore. They're representing the UK in what will eventually turn into a field shooting competition. It's a discipline that's incredibly popular in Northern Europe and tests true hunting scenarios. The field shooting competition is something Scandinavian. It's hunting orientated uh, shooting. You shoot on distances up to 580 meters, but also very short ranges, something like 60 meters, on game paper targets. And you shoot in them in many different hunting positions. For example, lying down on a backpack, kneeling or using a shooting stick or from a high seat or something. So it's perfectly made for training and hunting situations. Before the competition, the guests are allowed to go freestyle, trying moving targets, static targets, rifles and pistols in different parts of this impressive range. What's even better is that each lucky journo is given their own Zauer 202 rifle in 308 plus scope plus lots of gecko bullets. Just for the weekend though. I'm still relatively new to the shooting trade. You are Let's be honest, a bit of an old hand at this kind of thing. I am, that's very true. <laughs> but um, why are these trips valuable to you, apart from the fact obviously we get to come to Denmark and shoot lots of guns? Well, obviously the freebie is always attractive, but from my point of view, you have relationships with the UK importers and therefore relationships with the actual manufacturers. And I find that you get better service, more satisfaction and greater help from the manufacturers. You come on these trips, you contribute, you have fun, and uh, they can see you there, and I believe that if you don't turn up, they realise you're not interested. So for me, it's, it's a chance to get hands on new equipment, which as an editor, like your good self, is very, very important. You know, as we can say, two months in advance, we shot this, we tested that, and everybody's going, ooh, that's good, we're looking forward to this. And so it's work and play combined, and I think that any gun journalist worth his salt would not turn down any of these trips. Gecko is a brand that's busy undercutting the rest of the ammunition market. In some cases it's half the price of the market leaders at home and abroad. The ballistic soap and the melons are getting a hammering on this range, but the big thing Gecko wants to show is the stopping power of its express bullet. The folk at Gecko believes the design of their ammo beats the competition, especially at longer distances when velocity is dropping. The difference is in the construction of the bullet with the ballistic tip with the hollow point in it in combination with a very thin front jacket. This makes it a very explosive mixture even on slow velocities. You can even shoot animals and kill them very quickly at the velocities of 400 meters per second, meaning you could reach out more than 400, 500 meters in a three way. Not many countries can offer a shooting range that has so many distances and setups. That's why a German company has travelled all the way to Denmark. A range of more than 300 metres is unheard of in the country next door. But this is the perfect place for Zeiss to show just what the ASV Plus turret can achieve. When you sign in the rifle, you put the ring on one to the, to the to ballistic turret. And if you want to shoot on 300 metres, for example, you just lift the turret, turn it to three, then you shoot on 300 meters and you, will, you can aim directly where you want to hit. And this is very easy, actually. Everybody knows it immediately. There are other solutions in the market, of course, where you maybe have to more think about it. And that makes us different. This makes our ASV different to, to our competition. For 
The system comes with nine rings for nine different ballistic situations. If you shoot something a bit weird or load your own, the guys at Zeiss will make a ring especially for you. It's a bit like The Hobbit. Right, time to get semi-serious and think about keeping our end up. So yesterday we had a great day, product testing, lots of fun, shot lots of ammo, tested all the new kit, but today it turns a bit serious with a uh, pan-continental journalist-based field shooting competition, something I've never tried before in my life. And watching some of the guys yesterday, the Swedish guy who shoot 580 metres freehand and hitting the target every time, I think we're in for a bit of a pacing today. Dom's group starts with moving game, boar and stags with a semi-auto Zara. It's a challenging target. Pete does well here, even though he shoots the wrong target to start with. He's not alone. Apparently it happens all the time at these events. Now we could go on about the quality of the barrel, the trigger mechanism or the special finish on the Zara rifles that are being used this weekend, but oh, we just did. Zawa rifles, once left behind by their groovy straight pull cousins at Blaza, are having a renaissance and are the cool kids in town. Uh, they have the elegance, they are modern, they combine our tradition with the latest technologies in um, manufacturing and also our precision <coughs> and uh, the quality of the complete product. It's outstanding, so um, that's why we are so cool. <laughs> Back out on the range and the editor of Austria's St Hubertus magazine, Martin Schuster, is leading the group and he's as good using open sights as he is hitting moving game. We never really do any freehand shooting for hunting in the UK, but you hunt in Austria, Martin. Um, what's the practical application for this kind of shooting? Uh, it's, it's very common in Austria, just uh, while uh, blood tracking, because you follow uh, the, the rounded wild boar especially in uh, the branches where you can't see very far so the, the uh, boar comes out very close, very quick and so you, it's, it's much more easier to, to hit them. Just the distances to two, three meters. So this, this is a very important skill yeah, for hunting for in, in, in Austria. Austria yeah. Yeah. The group now finds itself in the picturesque woodland ranges where the ASV Plus should come into its own. A few clicks is all you need to change from one target to another. So is Pete Moore feeling confident? Probably not off the sticks, certainly prone I think, but uh, sticks is uh, always a bit wobbly for me. I can be good, I can be bad, but I'm not consistent, which is uh, not a worry, but just the way it is. But I'll do my best. The day really is testing these shooting journeys, and some situations suit more than others. It was very tough, I was about as stable as a blancmange on that, never had to shoot, you know, <laughs> never shot from kneeling where I've been able to use a, a stick for a rest and... Uh, not entirely sure I've done a very good job on that. Really, really tricky. I'm sure there's a, a technique for it, but I haven't got it. But every dog has its day, and Dom does really well with That's some okay. long-distance okay. ball. Good, good shooting. So can you just say that a bit louder, yeah, yeah, please? Yeah, good, perf good almost shooting. perfect shooting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this one was. <laughs> you cannot deny the marksmanship of some of these guys. On this range, there's a buck at 70 metres and a stag at 240 metres. Without changing position, the new distance gets dialed in, and hey exactly. presto, John from the Netherlands you, has shot change. this yeah. superbly. Yeah. John's group, three, three shots at 240 metres, having just changed with ASV, bang on. Yeah, amazing. So if golf is a good walk ruined, this seems to be about the opposite. You know, we've covered a lot of ground through the Danish countryside, um, but we've had some great fun along the way. Uh, I have to say I'm exhausted now. You know, my shoulder is pounding after two days of punishment. Um, but what a great fun, what a great fun. And what an education shooting with some of these continental hunters you know this kind of training is part of their culture um, you know some of the some of the Swedish guys say they have ranges in every village and they do this kind of shooting as part of competitions as part of hunter training some of the Austrian guys say you know they have to do this kind of shooter training in order to get their hunting license we don't have anything approximating it in the UK this practical field shooting um, and watching some of these guys they're, they're phenomenal shots absolutely phenomenal uh, and uh, it shows how far we've got to got to go to catch up, really. But I'll certainly be practicing more similar stuff uh, in the future, and hopefully, if we get a chance to come back, we'll do a little bit better. Dom doing well there, coping with foreigners. Now, for someone hopelessly out of his depth, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. Now, of course, the biggest story of the week has been the cancellation of the CLA Game Fair 2012. 
If you click here, there's a link to our special report from the site. In the meantime, there's been much speculation about the cost to the area as well as traders. ITV suggests it could top £32 million. Look out for our new item, Calendar, directly after this news bulletin, which will show just how the shooting industry is fighting back. The 11-strong Great Britain shooting team has moved from Bisley to the Olympic Village. Top Olympic hopeful Peter Wilson, competing in the double trap, told the BBC he's hopeful that the London Olympics will help erase the idea that the sport of shooting in Britain is only for a privileged few. Olympic events start on the 28th of July with the women's 10-metre air rifle. John Bidwell managed to battle through horrendous conditions to win the Fitask British Grand Prix at the weekend. John scored 189, leaving a three-way shoot-off for second. George Digweed, who set the course at Hickenham near Beaconsfield, Buckinghamshire, won the World yes, Cup leg of the competition, too, yeah. which was being run in tandem. And please stay tuned for our yeah. film following George as he takes us through his first ever competitive layout. The Countryside Alliance's Game to Eat campaign is running a full month of game promotion. November will see the first Go Wild with British Game Month. There'll be celebrity chef recipe booklets and the Countryside Alliance's regional teams will be working with butchers and game dealers to ensure game is widely available and on the menu in pubs and restaurants. Go to gametoeat.co.uk. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Stay with us now for Calendar UK with the map that matters. Welcome to Field Sports Britain's calendar with dates for your diary, smartphone and post-it note. We start with some events to lift the game fair blues and EJ Churchill's in High Wycombe. They're holding a mini game fair on Friday the 20th and Saturday the 21st of July. They're offering have a go sessions, clay competitions, shopping at their clothing store. There's also an invitation to disappointed CLA standholders to show up and set up a pitch. Francis Lovell and Hunter Wellies have already signed up with Hunter hosting a party on Friday evening. They're hoping for sunshine and smiles, and what's best of all is that it's free. To register, email reception at ejchurchill.com. Let's head north to York Guns. They'd sorted a shooting simulator to play with at the game fair this year and don't want to see it gathering dust, so they're throwing open the doors of the shop this Friday, Saturday and Sunday for a game fair Yorkshire style. Kids can shoot for free. They're promising a hog roast, drink, good prices and good times. There's an awful lot of people come to this country and sort of book time for CLA Game Fair. So if they're about and they want to see product and, you know, yeah, get involved in sort of shooting right. industry, then, you know, get themselves up here. For more information, go to yorkguns.com. Now, moving closer to the source of all this trouble, we're going to John Bradshaw's gun shop in Fotheringhay near Peterborough, which is only 40 miles away from Beaver Castle. They're having a special event on Saturday and Sunday between 10 and 4. There's a huge selection of new and second-hand guns, and optics experts from Swarovski and Miopta will be there to answer any questions. There's also advice from guys from Edgar Brothers with Remington, Hornaday, Hatsan, Zolly and CZ products. There's a prize draw and hot food to keep those blood sugar levels up, so you can concentrate on buying. Visit johnbradshawguns.co.uk. Let's head east to the Oxford Gun Company and they're also hosting an event on Friday and Saturday with guests like Mike Yardley. Mike will be showing off his new Boxall and Edmiston shotgun and the Field Sports nice Channel cameras will be there too on Saturday. Now looking ahead and the forecast is promising. In the world of agriculture, the Royal Welsh Show is going ahead on the 23rd and 26th of July. North of the border and the Moy Field Sports Fair takes place at Moy, south of Inverness on the 3rd and 4th of August. We'll be in Ireland at Burr Castle for the Irish Game Fair on the 27th and 28th of August. Visit irishgameandcountryfair.com. And wrapping up our roundup, Countryman Fairs has two events coming up. One in Cumbria in August, one in the Midlands in September. Lowther Game and Country Fair is on the 12th and 13th of August and Britain's second biggest festival of field sports, the Midland Game Fair, is on the 15th and 16th of September. Countryman Fairs say that in 30 years, they've never cancelled an event. As you can see, nothing has touched this ground since this time last year, so we shouldn't have too many problems, particularly if the weather stays nice for us. If you want to be on Calendar's map that matters next week, talk to James. James at fieldsportschannel.tv Thank you, David. Now, George Digweed has won world championships in sporting and fit-ask over four decades. 
for the first time he's trying his hand at designing a Grand Prix. A tennis court is a tennis court, a rugby pitch a rugby pitch, but for some sports the design of the course makes all the difference. Golf, motor racing and of course shooting are all affected by the layout, the setup and the makeup of the ground. For the first time, 19 times world champion George is designing a competitive shoot, the Fitask British Grand Prix. So what is he bringing to the party? I want everybody to be able to walk onto every stand and think I can hit that target and yet the subtle changes in speed, angle, um, line of the target, takes targets off people. Um, so basically, they, you know, when they go on to a stand, they think they can hit everything, and yet they might miss one or two. George works closely with Primatics' Jamie Peckham. George describes him as being like his golf caddy, working with him to get the best out of each stand. There's a lot of tinkering going on, especially with a virgin ground. Can you just move that? A out of touch. You have to go out of touch so it goes through that gap rather than into the oak tree. Is there any way we could tilt that? Which way do you want to go? That way. Yeah. The targets, wherever you go, are going to be similar, incomers going away, but with, with, it's the different settings. And what I like, and especially here, each stand you go to is a different setting. So we're shooting over a cover crop here and the trees, and then it's over there, and it's, it's a bit of a different aspect. But, and then you had the platform pegged down through there, then the and George has done the, the rabbit stand, so it's all rabbit targets. So yeah, that's, uh, it's, they've been very friendly here and looked after me, which is nice. You're an old pro when it comes to this sort of thing, but you've got a novice here you're working with, unfortunately, Mr Digweed. I mean, how's he, how's he shaped up? No, he's been very good, actually. He knows, he's shot enough targets, he knows what he wants, so it's been, it's been pretty easy going. Long as he just tells you what to do and just get on with it. To give you an idea of what George is trying to achieve, he takes us through the subtleties of a target. The target A is coming out from below your feet, going straight away across the field. Now what we've done on here is we've put a bit of tilt on the trap, so the shooter will look at this target as a straight going away bird, but when they actually come to shoot the target, it's actually just tailing to the right a little bit, and we're hoping to you know, just catch an odd shooter or two out on the fact that they're going to shoot up the side of it. So it comes out straight at the tree and then drifts to the right. Now George is not only designing this competition, but competing here too. Some might find this odd, but George is not into foul play and hasn't fired a single shot here. I really don't think there's, uh, you know, there's a home advantage as such because a target is a target. I might be able to work out slightly what's, you know, the subtleties of what it's doing, but then I could probably overread that and, and miss them because of that. So I'm sure it will become apparent at the end of the weekend, but uh, I certainly wouldn't class a home advantage. And, you know, with the standard of shooting in Britain now, um, it's an open, open event for 50 people, I would think. Hickenham Farm does have a game shoot, but it's the first time a clay competition will be hosted here, with the help from Game Bore, CCI Clays and Primatic. So why would you put yourself through it, especially when the ground is so wet? It was last year at uh, the World uh, in Orville, uh, the World Fitas in Orville. We were all in uh, the restaurant and uh, uh, with uh, Hugh Smith, who is here, and uh, George. Uh, and I said, well, why don't we uh, raise the profile of uh, FITAS in the UK and uh, well, why don't we uh, organize uh, something at, uh, the, at Ickenham Farm uh, and with uh, the designer, George Digwid. And uh, we all sp uh, spoke together and they said, OK, well, let's do it. Are you regressing that now? Yes. <laughs> now it's, uh, we're going to deliver a fantastic uh, venue. Uh, the location is fantastic, uh, nobody has shot the targets, uh, it's on virgin ground, uh, it's a one-off uh, and it's going to be superb. Of course George can't just turn up, stick out a few traps and open the doors. It all has to be checked and verified. Hugh Smith is the chief referee and with notepad at the ready he's making sure everything is in order. But how much sway does he actually have? Well, probably a little bit of horse trading will go on, so we come to a, uh, an agreement because what I don't want to do is pull out of the, the artist and throw his picture away. This is what he wants. Now, I look at it from a different perspective, so I'm going to be looking at it to see that it's shootable, that the, like I've said previously, the targets are visible, but uh, the good targets and safe targets is, is one of the top priorities is as well. Is this game board? Is it? Yes. Game board Hugh yeah. describes Fitask as the Formula One of shooting sports. Let's find out if that's true and ask the boss. 
Ah, it's a, it's a technique problem. Because when you are a, a, a sporting shooter, a FITASC sporting shooter, you must, you must know all the technique. You can't stay without any hole in your technique. Uh, when you shoot a fixed trajectory, like for ski, Olympic trap, double trap, it's a, of course you need to have a talent, but it's a mechanical shoot. With our uh, uh, shoot, uh, with our discipline, you must be, use always your intelligence bef before shooting for every target. You need to understand this target, the speed, the, the distance of the target, the, the way he go. And, uh, and, and this is why we need to have a very, very uh, carefully people with a, with a lot of attention uh, to the to the target and uh, the champion for the, this game is, of course is George. There is a desire to promote FITASC here as Jean-Francois says it's a discipline that really pushes the competitors and whether it's the novelty value of participating in a digweed designed shoot or the attraction of FITASC a 260 plus field must show there's a thirst for competitive shooting in this country. Next, a new series for anybody missing the CLA Game Fair Retail Therapy. It's Kit Special. We're knocking down seven items for you this week. Rock bottom prices from across the British shooting trade. Let's get going, my loves, with a superb walking boot from Yachty Yacht, the clothing company from Finland that's taken the UK by storm. The Finns sold a record number of these boots in 2011. Genuine leather that repels water and dirt. It has a triple layer waterproofing technology insulated with Thinsulate. £179.99 to you, lady sir. Find them at arcticoutdoor.com. Pigeon shooting, my lord, you'll be wanting the latest model electric pigeon flapper from the Pigeon Shooter. With battery and timer, it will last up to eight hours. More power, Igor. Place among your pattern to simulate a landing pigeon or crow and you will pull the birds. We simulate to stimulate. It even comes with a free bag and the toot ensemble is designed to increase your bag. Special offer, £65, thepigeonshooter.com. Wear this outdoor pursuits vest from gun dog specialist, kennel mate, not just for dog training, but falconry, shooting, fishing, even, dare I breathe the word, rambling. It has two large pockets on the front with internal compartments, one of them completely waterproof for phones and one large rucksack style pocket on the back. Lots of different sizes, lots of colours, customers love them. Get them at special show price of £25, down from £35, kennelmate.co.uk. <laughs> The Blade Tech is known as the ultimate sharpener. Quick and easy to use, no need to worry about correct angles when you're sharpening, it's as easy to carry as the knife itself. Simply draw the blade through the tungsten carbide V half a dozen to ten times to achieve a razor sharp edge on any straight edged knife including pen and pocket knives, gardening knives, kitchen knives and even a small axe. RRP is £10, it's yours for £7.99 from STS North Wales. Go to bladetech.co.uk are you the consummate sports male or female? Dirty dog, make good looking safety glasses for speed skiers, gnarly snowboarders and now shooters. West Country Guns would have had them on sale at its stand at the CLA Game Fair 2012, but there is no CLA Game Fair, so they are a sale item at westcountryguns.com. Half the price and twice the looks of other clays, shades, dirty dogs start at just £40. Bite their hands off. That well-known gun shop, York Guns, has a good stock of Tasco rangefinders it is keen to dispose of. Ever fancied a rangefinder at a reasonable price? Now's your chance. The Tasco 600 gives you an accurate reading from its laser from 10 yards to 600 and it has a four times magnification. It was £165.95. It is £129.95. Can't say fairer than that. YorkGuns.com it's waterproof, it's breathable, it's packed full of features to give you plenty of protection and lots of movement. It is the Musto clay shooting jacket, here seen on the cover of Shooting Times. Should have had one for the Fitask Grand Prix. Synthetic suede panels make for sure place gun mounting and there is a super D3 recoil pad facility on each shoulder. Best of all, the price from Gilsand Sports only. It's £100 down from £170. Gilsandsports.com that's it. Feast your eyes. Fish into your pockets if the websites ask you. The promo code is Field Sports. Thanks for watching. This is Kit Special. Two.
throughout August, the Schools Challenge gets kids who've never tried it before to take up shooting. So how does that work? Never shot before? Well, you're going to learn something, as will Laura Ford and Fran Hook. They're in the capable hands of shooting instructor and Great Britain double trap shooter Stephen Walton. Well, Laura, do you want to have a go first? Why not? As long as they can walk away, happy with smiles on their faces and they just enjoy the day, really. Obviously, you're going to have to go for the basics, getting the feet right, obviously good on your shoulders, so it's nice and steady in the cheek on the stock, so it fits good and shoot well, hopefully hit a few clays. And footwork and mounting the gun is exactly what they learn, the basics. Get these right now and Laura and Fran will shoot better than most of their brothers and boyfriends for the rest of their lives. First, Laura takes the stand. Next, it's Fran's go. We're just going to put the gun on your shoulder and it's most important that you keep the cheek on the stock at all times, OK? We'll just, there's no cartridges in it, we'll just give it a quick go. OK, in your shoulder, head on the stock. So your right eye is looking down the, down the barrel. Lean forward. Absolutely fantastic, that's perfect. As Steve says, your first shooting lesson is not about being taught to do anything. It's about enjoying shooting. Oh, and not learning any bad footwork or mounting habits. It's all about accessibility. The girls are here as part of the Novice Schools Challenge, which is for under-21s who have not shot before, or not shot much. They get a day's tuition at the Oxford Gun Company's award-winning clay ground throughout August for just £109, including cartridges, clays and lunch. So do you think it's a possibility you might do it now? Yeah, now we've come along here and, you know, seen what it's all about. Mm. We're definitely interested. You're part of the Facebook Twitter generation, Fran. This kind of thing, I mean, can, can you see shooting sports promoted that way? Yeah, definitely. Like, after seeing, like, your brothers shoot, and you go on Facebook and you see, like, the pages for Oxford Gun Company, when you go on them, you find out lots of information, and I think it's a good way of getting people into shooting. Are you allowed to see your brother's Facebook page, or has he blocked you? Uh, I'm allowed to see it. Actually, yeah, I'm allowed to see it. Are you allowed to see yours, Laura? No, I've been blocked off part of it. <laughs> so, has he blocked you off the bits where he shows off his shooting skills? Yeah, his pictures and everything, the bragging. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, it's up to you then to send this video out to your mates. Yeah, definitely. So how does that compare to other sports the girls could take up? We drive to a local tennis club to find out how much it costs for a lesson there. They didn't really want to talk to us, but one of them said it comes in at £90 an hour. Supposing the girls enjoy the sport enough to want to buy a gun, will it ruin them? If you want to take up shooting, you just want to stay at a club level and you go out and you shoot on a Sunday morning and you go down the pub at lunchtime, you can spend three, four, five hundred pounds, six hundred pounds, and a new gun as well. Um, or if you want to get right up and go to GB level, county level, even maybe Olympic level, then you've got to start to um, put a lot more work and a lot more money into it. Um, the Boston range, what I'd call a proper sports equipment gun, is about twelve to fifteen hundred pounds. What would you recommend for these girls? Um, something like a Browning 525. Um, which is going to cost you £1,200 to £1,500. Um, a brilliant starter gun for somebody that wants to get into it and go into competitions. How does that compare to other kits in other sports? We take the girls to a bike shop in Oxford to ask what bicycles cost. To go for something like a full-on downhill bike, you're looking at a minimum of about uh, £2,000. Um, otherwise, if you're looking for a good race XC bike, then you're looking at very similar, about £1,800 sort of pounds, and they're all going to be a good performance mountain bike to either do one or the other. Back at the Oxford Gun Company, the girls are surprised. It was actually very... Yeah. Very, very surprised. Yeah. So there you are. Shooting is cheap and easy to do. Visit www.theschoolschallenge.co.uk and if you enjoyed it, please Facebook and tweet this film to all your non-shooting friends. Now we're off to Croatia. Real Tree Pro staffer Simon Barr really wants a wild boar. Baggage handlers can be brutal with gun cases, so the one thing I prefer to do when hunting abroad is check my zero as soon as I can once I've landed. Oh, that was quite a boo. Um, just got off the plane about an hour ago, and as we expected, uh, rifles needed to be zeroed and checked, so I've just had a go with mine, and it was about two inches down, two inches. 
So we're just making sure that everything is hunky-dory before we go out this evening. Swelteringly hot, but uh, this is a very, very important exercise to make sure we get everything bang on before we go out. I'm in eastern Croatia with Artemis Hunting to assist with the pre-harvest management of wild boar. Conveniently, just over two hours from the UK, there is an abundance of quality game and exciting hunting opportunities throughout Croatia. It is also famous for its enormous subspecies of wild boar, the Sus scrofa attila. Heat and humidity are perfect breeding grounds for mosquitoes, so thank goodness someone's remembered the DEET. I want to see the damage these animals are doing firsthand. Also to find out how hunters and farmers try to balance each other's needs at this very vulnerable time of year. So they'll root the crop up yes. when, it's, when the, when the when soil it's is soft, soft yeah. and when it's not they'll push it over and they'll... Exactly, you can see the example here. It's pushed over and then they were grazing on it. And you think that the farmer says this is 50% damaged? Yeah, I mean, as you can see, I mean, you have patches of yeah. uh, classes and uh, I mean, it's just, uh, it looks really bad. And at the end, we have to pay for the damage. So you have to pay for the damage? Yeah, hunting, the hunters... hunting society and uh, hunting clubs. So the hunt, sort of hunting federation? Exactly. I mean, people or people involved in hunting uh, who have leases in Croatia, they're responsible to control damage and pay for the damage. Tonight's a first for me. We're going to spend half an hour in a tower overlooking a local boar hotspot, then we're off stalking boar under the moonlight, which I've never done before. Hunting at night under the moon deprives your usual armory of senses. Every noise seems exaggerated, and I can feel adrenaline coursing through my veins as we move around the fields in the shadows. Like the main, my main sense of sight is kind of impaired because we're using the moonlight so all my other senses seem to be buzzing. My hearing is all just absolutely kind of acute and the smells, the, the fresh smells, it's really, really hot today and it's got really, really kind of misty and moist and it's just brought all the smells of the ground out. Just hear so many things happening around us, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing place to come stalking. We creep through different crops, stop, look and listen. There are boar tracks, boar smells and boar noises, but nothing to get my crosshairs onto. However, a Croatian hunter also taking advantage of the moon has had better luck than us. There's a field just, just to one side of us which has been completely flattened. So I don't know what this guy's been eating. But probably quite a lot. It's after midnight and with the sun rising in just a couple of hours, we decide to stalk through. As day breaks, Stefan drops me off on the edge of an ancient woodland full of shade and wallows, known to be a refuge for boar during the heat of the summer's day. Okay, I've been stalking for five hours since it's been dark and it's just got light now. Stefan's dropped me off into the entrance of this woodland. I've walked down past a high seat. With the wind on my back, I've got into a very, very good position now. This is the wood that the boar come and sleep in during the day. They come through from the fields where we've just been stalking. And this is a perfect place to sit up for a couple of hours at this time of the day. <laughs> yes. I don't really like waiting. I'm a bit overexcited at the moment. A decent sized boar came out midway through me talking to you, stopped for half a second in the ride and I managed to get a shot on it. The boar I finally connected with lays motionless deeper in the woodland around 50 yards from where I hit it. The shot was, as I thought, a little bit low but it's gone through both legs uh, and taken out the bottom of the lung so it was actually absolutely the right thing to do to give it 15 minutes. Um, Regrettably, it's a sow, but I can see from her that she's not lactating. Come and have a look. You can see that she's not lactating. So she either hasn't had a litter or she's a barren sow. You often get this when you've got high densities of boar. So uh, it's beyond the 1st of July, and in Croatia you can shoot any animal after the 1st of July. We were told by Tomo you can shoot any sow as long as there's no piglets at foot. And I looked at her, she had no piglets at foot, so I'm very happy with the result on that. Um, I'd say she's probably about 
65, 70 kilos minimum. So that is a very, very good result. Um, after five hours stalking, looking for a boar, sitting up and having it happen just like that is absolutely amazing. So what a superb result, very happy indeed. I've learnt that to keep Croatian farmers happy at this critical time of year when the crop is at its most vulnerable, Croatian hunters have to show extreme commitment and first-class field craft. After the grullet, the contents of this boar's stomach show just how much each and every ravenous animal is impacting this pre-harvest crop. That is oats, wheat and a significant amount of money and they're eating that every day. So that's the whole point of the management exercise. Not only are we stopping that damage, we're also putting some good food on the table. Stalking boar under the moon is like nothing I've done before and a true sensory overload. Croatia is an exciting country of true hunting adventure. I can't wait to return in the winter for Driven Boar with Tomo and Artemis Hunting. Don't forget to check the latest episode of Team Wild TV with my hunting buddy Ian Harford. He's in Africa shooting an Impala with an air gun. Well, we're back next week and if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit one of the squares which are appearing here because they will enable you to subscribe to our show or visit our show's page www.youtube.com slash show slash Field Sports Britain or indeed go to our website fieldsportschannel.tv where you can scroll down to the bottom put your email address into the constant contact form or we'll constantly contact you or click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter in the same place. This has been Field Sports Britain, soggy but unbowed. <laughs>